Um, just a little bit about Smurfit Capital. You probably know us, um, but you don't. So if I said to you we make lots of Carlin boxes, we make lots of PepsiCo, PepsiCo trays, we make lots of um, boxes for Walker's crisps, that's probably enough. We do a lot of corrugated cardboard. So that's, that's a little bit about us. We've got a lot of sites in the UK, and we've started using Malone a little bit now, um, and I see that that can only continue now, to be honest, from what we've seen so far. Um, I thought I'd speak a little bit about UK manufacturing and a few of the challenges that we've got, certainly a Smurf at Kappa. Um, UK manufacturing gets a bad press, but actually we're doing quite well. Um, and we're very good in the UK about putting ourselves down. Certainly our company's in massive growth. We can't actually keep up with it. Um, we're investing to expand um, and we're acquiring and just growing through synergies in that way. So our biggest challenge is growth. Our second biggest challenge, and it was something that Stephen mentioned before, is skills and capability. Um, we fight, especially in engineering, we really struggle to find good engineers. And that doesn't just mean at the top, it means at every level, and, and I, I don't know if that's something that's shared by you in the room today. You know, we're spending a lot of time trying to invest in apprentices, in engineers, in technical development, um, and also in trying to develop good engineering managers. And they're few and far between. So um, if you're an engineering manager in the room, well done. Um, you're well sought after. Um, so the skill shortage is something that's not going to go away. And it was interesting today to, to hear some of the comments that were said. Um, but we need that skill shortage fixing today. Because if, if you're in business, everything needs to be today or tomorrow. Customers, Our customers need it today. Um, and we don't have that skills capability. So it was really refreshing to listen to some of the plans that I've had explained to me previously about how Malone can fill the gap. Because um, it takes time to develop expertise. Now, I knew FMA and, and spoke to Paul about from a previous life. I used to be a brewer, so I knew FMA for big projects and a lot of big capital work that used to go on. And they were very competent and capable. And it was only recently I realized that they'd actually transformed themselves and could actually get into other projects. Because I don't know about you, but we don't have 20 million to spend. We don't have five. We sometimes have a, a lot of other capital to spend. So the big bit for me was to see the way that they could actually adapt and change and start to actually look at lots of other projects. And that was really refreshing. And that's really where we need that skill and expertise. So I thank you for that. Um, we need it. And some of the things that we've been working on <laughs> just to give you a flavor of it, we've done a lot of work on obsolescence with Malone. Um, that's a subject that's not gonna go away. All our plants get older. There's a few people in the room that we've worked with, Tudor and others that, um, you know, we, they keep selling us these systems that are gonna go out of date. Um, so thanks for that too, Tudor. Uh, <laughs> but it, we've done a lot of work looking at cataloging, looking at, looking at where there's obsolescence, and, and Phil and the team here at Malone have actually worked with us to put a plan together. And, and that's just gonna continue. So that's been a real challenge for us, and one that, that the Malone group have helped us with. Surprisingly, and it was another thing that I never really thought that, that these guys were into, but they did. Um, I'm guessing we've all got lots of plants, we've all got lots of spares, we've all got lots of parts. Um, and a number of people from Malone, including Andy Wilson and others, actually work with us at trying to find what we had on site, trying to standardize our spares, trying to actually clear out some of the things that were rubbish in our stock, because we all have them. Um, so looking at standardization of spares and spares policies and stock holding and actually having a motor management policy and PLC, all that kind of good stuff, which some of you are wondering what I'm on about. Um, actually, they really helped and they brought some structure and professionalism to it. So again, it's not necessarily something I would have gone, that's what they do, but they do. They're quite good at it. Quite good, Stephen, room to improve. Um, <laughs> And then one or two of the other things that they've started looking at as well. We, we had a conversation. We've just been through a big review looking at some of our utilities. We've got 32 plants in the UK. Can't do it all. Some are big, some are small, so don't get too excited. But we, we've got boilers and, and sort of um, transformers and stuff like that. So one of the things that we've started talking to Malone about is actually looking at maybe all our transformers because at some point, you know, one of those is going to fall over and put us out of business. So let's look at a structured approach to actually properly assessing and looking at the condition and looking at replacement and then managing a replacement program. 
So all those kind of things are just a headache, aren't they? You're just like, oh, I just need somebody to do it. And, and again, you know, what I could say as a, as a customer is they've started that, that approach across our business. And finally, I guess, one of the things that I would have known FMA for, and now Malone, was software. So projects. Um, interestingly, we've done a lot of work recently looking at software standards. We've done a lot of work at actually saying what should we have. We've looked at backups. We've looked at things that are going to keep factories running. So not just spending lots of money on a brand new system, but the whole sort of security and integrity of running the factory. And I think, certainly from my experience, that was the core of, of the business. But what's really interesting is to see how that's grown now and all these other things have come along that have sort of been more than I could have got before from FMA. So thanks for that. I think it's really good to see how FMA as it was has developed and, and what Malone has brought to it and certainly from what you were saying, um, you know, the future can only be good. Really appreciate that, and at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to relationships and capability and expertise. And certainly as a customer, that's what I'll be looking for from you guys, um, to fill that gap where we, we still struggle to get, you know, really good capability and expertise. So hopefully you'll go from strength to strength. Certainly hope you do, because you're working on some things for us, so we won't like you to do anything else. Um, but thanks for today. Certainly from everyone else from being here, it looks, uh, it looks like you've got a really good setup, and it can only go better. So thank you very much. Thank you.